have, we have two divisions. We have a SaaS division that offers uh, software as a service to uh, our customers. And our other division is what I'm going to talk to you about uh, today, which is Powwow. And you know, everybody's heard of uh, cloud management platforms. Well, we prefer to look at it as cloud monetization. Uh, really empowering organizations, enterprise, governments, uh, IaaS providers, solution providers, giving them a mechanism to really uh, provision and bill and meter all of their solutions and services that they want to offer, as well for enter enterprise being able to manage that chargeback uh, capabilities internally. And you know, management, cloud management, provisioning uh, is, is uh, pretty much cut and dry. But when you look at the metering aspect and being able to monitor what's happening on any of that sub-level from the software side right down to the uh, VM side, that's where really a lot of the magic uh, begins to happen. So when you look at Power, we have a combination of what we call engines. Uh, one of those engines is the store. And that's really the virtual store by which you put a service catalog in, whatever your services are, uh, solutions. As well, Sogenia has white-labeled solutions for unified communication, uh, for business intelligence, enterprise content management as a service. And that store basically is the uh, place where your cloud users will go and provision what they want to use, when they want to use it, uh, without need of interaction from IT. It's the ability to go and service the, the cloud user, have them select what they want to use, and have the system then provision the rest of it underneath. So after someone goes and selects a service, the provisioning engine clicks in. And we sit on top of all of the different Hyper-Vs. So we're agnostic with regards to Hyper-Vs. So irregardless whether this is sitting in a private data center or if this is uh, a service that you're offering for you know, perhaps Amazon, OpenStack, Azure, you're able to have your services and solutions be provisioned in the way that you want them, scaled out to where you want them, and then have the system go into the other aspect, which is the metering of it. How do we effectively meter our solutions? How do we know and how do we talk from a, a, a solution standpoint right down to the infrastructure standpoint? And how do we do that effectively to monitor what those applications are doing and also get away from looking at cloud as being a subscription? Cloud is not just a subscription. Applications need to be specifically monitored for what they do. Uh, as an example, we do faxing in the cloud, so we charge by page. It's you know, not a monthly subscription because you might have someone faxing out a million pages a day. So those are things that you need the application level talking through power, talking through our APIs in order for that to go into the metering and billing aspect and having that all done in a very seamless and non-intrusive way. And then when you look at the uh, taking that billing and rolling up all that information from either a reseller or an account level, uh, being able to manage that and properly allocate those resources back to your customers, have those statements driven. Or, as an example, we have, uh, you know, we're working with Ericsson in Europe right now. So H3G is using our system and Ericsson is using our system. They're using our metering and billing engine and sending back information into their SAP system. So again, we can talk to third-party systems, JD Edwards, SAP, and not necessarily only rely on our billing engine, but it might be something where the metering engine is utilized, and those two systems are then talking back and forth to each other in order for the companies to really monetize what they're doing. And Ericsson is a great case of that. They're taking uh, the power engine that's being hosted actually in a, a data center that we own over in Europe, and they're offering through H3G to their customers uh, some of their services as well. They're white labeling our uh, ECM content management as a service to their customers, and how is the provisioning aspect and the metering aspect, and then there's a communication back and forth through, uh, through SAP back to the enterprise system for billing and, and whatnot. So really when you look at this, uh, it, it gives you sort of a, a very broad picture of the, the power engine will really empower, again, cloud providers, enterprises, uh, large, large governments to either do chargebacks uh, and really offer any of their services or solutions through our catalog or through their own catalogs and then work with the power engine to do all the metering billing and have those cloud users provision what they want to use when they want to use it software as a service 
I need five users of BI, I need 20 users of uh, content management, you have your own solution store as well. So it's a very powerful thing. And what I'm going to do is we're, we're going to drop down and I'm going to show you some of the engine, both from an end user perspective and also from a, uh, an administrative perspective. So I'm going to log into basically the engine, uh, POW itself. So this is the uh, management console where uh, you will set up and administer the POW system. Now again, POW can sit within your own private cloud, within your data centers. It can be a hosted solution, whereby then you're using the POW engine uh, within a third party, Amazon or Azure, uh, anything of that nature. So whether you're a telco, whether you're a data center or an IS provider, uh, the power engine really can be incorporated in a lot of different flexible ways. And one of the main things uh, that's very important uh, when we look at this, it's the ability to provision the metering engine, the billing engine, and the provisioning engine to talk to any number of different cloud providers. So again, whether it's uh, VMware, whether it's Hyper-V, whether it's Zen, uh, we sit on top of that so you can provision your solution in a very seamless way and have it rolled out uh, in such a way that it's provisioned, perhaps on multiple cloud providers as well. You might choose your database servers to be hosted on AWS because they do Hadoop, and your web servers to be hosted on Azure because they are you know, an IS, which is something that you need. So again, being able to work with multiple cloud providers as well as private providers. We're a completely service-oriented system, which means you might have your own infrastructure, your own cloud provider that you want to hook into, and Power can really drive that uh, help you drive that business and you know this is where uh, you end up setting up the connections to uh, your different again metering billing and provisioning stores uh, within the, within the enterprise so when we take a look at for example your store and I'll, uh, I'll I'm gonna actually log into a store and we'll actually provision an application uh, Basically, you know, your, your engines can be distributed amongst different infrastructures in different locations. Again, your billing engine might be in your data center, but your store might actually be hosted on Amazon. And all of this is coming back through the power engine. And where a lot of the magic takes place is setting up your catalog. So what do we want to have within our services? And in this case, we have some of the Sogenia uh, SaaS solutions that we have. So we have analysis, we have enterprise content management, unified communications. And this is where you set up the store catalog and tell the Power Engine, okay, when someone comes to register and create a new uh, user for our service, what's going to happen behind the scenes? So if we go and, for example, take a look at the analysis solution, uh, we come down and we say, okay, who's, who's going to be our provisioning provider? So we're using AWS, we're using uh, Amazon, or any of the other cloud providers that we support. You know, what is the application? Is it public? Is it private? What is the URL? What's the application descri description? And then a lot of the magic happens within here. So when a, a new system is provisioned, what's happening? So we have to deploy a web server. We have to deploy a... A database server and what does that look like with regards to uh, with, with regards to those systems so when something is provisioned the provisioning engine comes in and says okay for analysis the database server is going to look like this and it's going to be provisioned based on user input again based on the store as well so you can set up uh, what, 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 what we call connectors to different aspects of the system and you provision it based on what your solution requires. So analysis might require a different number of CPUs, different number of RAM, number of servers, whereas a different solution might require something that's, you know, number of users. What are your counters on how you want to monitor your application? What are the counters on how you want to build for your application? And I gave a very good example. We do facts in the cloud. So one of our counters for facts in the cloud is pages, pages facts. But this also goes down and allows us through uh, monitoring and, and metering 
to go down to the uh, infrastructure level and monitor again any of the uh, mechanisms, network, bandwidth, disk usage and consumption so that all of this can be metered really in real time and you can go and look uh, at the system uh, in real time what's happening with regards to you know real time network uh, real time storage usage again across the systems so within large enterprise within chargebacks you're going to be able to go and monetize it and say you know engineering or or r d is consuming so much more computing power than the other divisions and use that for chargebacks so really we're empowering even IT to become that profit center within large enterprise or governments. And where all this ties in from a front end, so from a user perspective, again, is the store. So one of our SaaS offerings, which is powered by Powa, you know, is the store. So this is something where then the Powa engine determines how something is going to be configured. So if I want to go and configure, for example, Freedock, which is the uh, ECM, this is going to allow someone to go in and request that the system is set up for a certain number of CPUs, a certain number of times. So I'm going to go in, I need ECM for, you know, 30 days or 60 days, and they can actually provision what they need, when they need it, as they need it. Uh, and it's done through a very simple billing mechanism. You can do subscriptions or you can get more complex and use chargebacks or, or like we've done here, a, um, a, a consumption-based model where you know you purchase credits through one of the supported uh, credit card payments or invoice mechanisms and then you have credits consumed based on what you want to use so if i log in for example and have the system provision uh free dock for me it's now very simple for users to go in and provision a new service to be offered to their customers. So I'll go into the store. I can see on my desktop right now, I already have analysis provision, but let's go and provision FreeDoc, which is our ECM. And again, this can be any service or solution that you uh, require. So I'm gonna go into my store and I'm gonna configure FreeDoc. And I'm gonna say we need this just for you know, 154 days, and I'm going to say proceed to checkout. And again, this billing model is based on credits, so it's a consumption-based model. And once I request this activation, the provision engine is taking that request from a cloud user or an enterprise user within the organization, and the provision engine now is taking that and provisioning the system as requested, you know, number of CPUs, number of days, and provisioning the application for us based on everything that we've set up in the catalog. And then that will become uh, notified to a user when that, you know, it takes around two or three minutes usually for, a, uh, for the provision to happen. Again, for all the infrastructure to be created behind the scenes. Uh, again, sitting on any of the, the infrastructures, and the users will receive a uh, an email when the uh, when the provision is is complete, and then when the user logs into their desktop, the application will be uh, available for them. So. The, the uh, how it really is, is bringing together uh, the aspects of not only orchestration of the infrastructure and not only the virtual stores that you know everybody would create, but now the aspect of let's monitor both the software side and the hardware side from the from the infrastructure level, all, all the stuff that's happening within the VMs, and let's bring that together to a billing system whereby really we can empower organizations to, to monetize. And I think this is where people are really beginning to see the need uh, to have a revenue stream, a positive revenue stream, and enterprises in, in terms of chargeback capabilities and monitoring. So any, uh, any, any questions on anything that I've gone over or, or sort of shown you?
know, you can you can modify the interface because again we're 100 percent SOA. So if this is something that yeah you are purchasing and you're hoping to your data center, you can you can interact with different services, uh, some different metering and, and provisioning engines, and you can have it completely agnostic to uh, the interface. Yeah, it's uh, again done through both either RESTful or Excellent. Well, if there's no other questions, I just want to thank uh, thank everybody for attending the uh, the presentation. Thanks. Oh, okay. Excellent. No problem. Are, are you looking at this? I spoke to you. Do you have anything else? We can get into a deeper demonstration of it. If you want to see it a little bit deeper and go a, a deeper dive. Is Thanks.